Talks here, Markus Scholl of HK Audio, uh, together with DJ Daniel Agema. Hi, Markus. Hello. Um, and our new system, Lucas 2K, which was uh, especially developed for DJs who not only play their noise, but bring the noise to the event. Um, you had the opportunity to test it, and before you give us uh, your rendition of how it felt, could you please give an introduction to what you do as a DJ? Yes, of course. Uh, well, my name is Daniel, Daniel Agema, and I'm a DJ since uh, 1999. And uh, I started like uh, like being a club DJ, and then I had like a long time touring with a with a band as a band member, like being a DJ on, on stage as a band member. And then, uh, unfortunately, we split up, so I uh, came back to club DJing, um, uh, especially for like house and uh, techno music, uh, and. Uh, yeah, I also work as a trainer for Vibra. Vibra is a German Germany's biggest DJ school, and I teach DJing and music production. And you do this for a couple of years, as I read in a, at the internet. So, um, what are the expectations of people who come to you and want to learn the tool of the trade? Uh, well, uh, expectations they they differ a lot. I, I must say because. Um, uh, some people they come to us and they don't even know what DJing is. They just heard of it, like you know, it's something cool. I I, I want to learn. Um, so so when they come to me, I, uh, I I show them what's what's there to learn, right? So um, they don't know actually what what they what they have to expect. So they want to learn the whole thing. Uh, on the other hand, we have some 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 semi semi pros. Um, that are like very good already and have a certain problem like for example scratching or stuff like that so they come to us with a specific problem and say I just want to learn this so uh, yeah you have different different students have different expectations yeah so there are beginners and pros indeed uh, and for the beginners uh, do you give some recommendation about the gear they don't have yet and uh, what are those recommendations all about yeah uh, yes yeah, certainly we do um, actually that's something something which students uh, um, well actually need uh, and are, are quite quite thankful to have to, to get some to get some uh, advice on, on equipment uh, and talking about PA equipment um, especially for beginners it's very important that you are um, that it's easy to use right and it's uh, fail proof or how, however you can <laughs> how, how fail proof something can be um, uh, so that's something that's very important and of course uh, sound matters a lot so I mean we are DJs uh, we love music and um, we use and listen to music maybe um, more or more intense than than some other consumers do so yeah sound matters a lot so um, talking about Lucas for example um, this system is like is, is like very easy to use, very mobile, um, and it has a great sound. So that's something that is important for all my students. Yeah. Uh, you just dropped the buzzword a DJ fail, which is like very uh, uh, much around since uh, YouTube uh, <laughs> yes. fa fa famous or infamous DJs uh, produce their clips on uh, well they don't actually produce them themselves <laughs> yeah um, have you ever had an opportunity to uh, bridge a gap like there was uh, no noise coming out of the system and how did you do yeah. great that you call it opportunity right? <laughs> that's what I tell my students all the time yeah <laughs> um, well, that's also some skill to show actually yeah actually it is and actually it might it might actually be an opportunity um, for example um, it ha I mean, failures happen, right? It, 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 it's it, it, nobody's perfect, and especially if you are starting being a DJ, uh, failures happen. Uh, and then, uh, for example, I had, I had, it happened to me. Um, the CD player, it, it just, uh, 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 it just went off. Uh, the power was wasn't plugged in correctly, so I was, I was hammering it. Or I don't know what I did, but it, it, the music was playing, and then suddenly the music was off. So what do you do? You can you can uh, you can you know like like uh, uh, be ashamed and say oh I, I fucked can I say that fucked up but yeah I you know I, I messed up and um, or you can use it as an opportunity and have the next track uh, 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 running and you know make like a big gest gesture and 
everybody knows it's not your fault, right? So, uh, and then if you have a, if a great hit, uh, everybody will, will celebrate even more. So yeah, it can be an opportunity and that's what we teach a lot. Uh, but in the end, you want to, you, want, you don't want to make these uh, fails. So, so you, you are looking for something that is uh, yeah, very easy uh, to use so you, you don't get uh, any problems or as, as little problems as possible. Yeah. So sound checking is uh, vital to a good performance uh, and to know the whole equipment is uh, half of the rent, as we used to say in, uh, in Germany. <laughs> so, uh, buying such a system like uh, Lucas 2K is half of the rent, you'd say? Yeah, for sure, definitely, yeah. And then the other, the other, the other half uh, is the sound checking and stuff like that, yeah. But if you have a good system you can rely on, I mean, that's, that's another, another important thing, right? That you have to, you don't have to be afraid that something turns off or um, the, like the limiter goes on and, and, and suddenly there's no more, uh, no more sound or something like that. Um, that's cer certainly very important and uh, with a system like the Lucas uh, 2K you can, you can certainly rely on that. So, yeah. And then you, you do a better performance if you know your equipment is something you can rely on. Right in the end, um, you, you you're a DJ too, right? So you know that when 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 you know there's a there's a there's a, a, a crappy cable somewhere and you are only allowed to touch the equipment like like like, like very softly, you don't. You it's can, unnerving. Yeah, you can't perform, right? So if you but if you know you can assure everything is everything is right, you are free to perform and your performance will be better, of course. Um, as you mentioned before, that loudness is a factor that uh, DJs are mad about because uh, once the evening progresses, they get into the red even further and further until there's no headroom anymore. Yeah. Um, does the same account for bass? Is there a certain limit to the bassness of your performance or is it like uh, Das Bo has sung, uh, die Leute wollen bass, people want bass all over the place? <laughs> uh, bass all over the place. Uh, well, in my opinion, uh, as a professional, I think there is such a thing than that than too much bass, uh, and that's when the music sounds muddy, or or, or, or the, the the sound sounds sounds muddy. You, you can think of a, of somebody talking, right? And if you then there is too much bass. So obviously, uh, and we're not talking about like uh, uh, feedbacks and stuff like that. That's certainly another problem with too much bass. So yes, there is too much bass, but. Um, I think in the end um, there's, there, there, there might be too less bass also. So you have to have the right amount of bass, right? So choosing, for example, the right PA uh, for the right um, uh, venue uh, uh, might, be, might be something you, you should think about in the first place. And when you think about too much bass, less bass, and then if you have a system like, like Lucas where you are flexible and you can, you can say, okay, I have, a, I have, a, I have huge venues, uh, uh, then I might combine combine the Lucas with with another with another uh, a subwoofer, for example, um, or if you know it's a, it's a small venue, like a, like a wedding or a small wedding wedding or stuff like that, uh, and you can you can choose a smaller system uh, which suits the room better. Then then you are flexible and and you you can you can be always right. And I think in my opinion that's where you want to go. But. Uh if you only want to buy your first system, uh, yeah. let's say, and you have to play different venues, yeah. what should people start with? I mean, you can always say, oh yeah, I buy the 18-inch yeah. speaker and then I'm safe with having gigs on, on, in bigger venues, yeah. right? But uh, money-wise, does it account for it? Well, um, I think the, the smaller version, is, is, um, it has power, enough power to do like almost any 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 job you you have as a, as a beginner um, and uh, of course if you say okay I want the I want I want a lot of a lot of power a lot of bass and a big bass and for big rooms you will choose that but if you want to be flexible um, to play also smaller smaller rooms smaller venues uh, and and don't shock people with what kind of equipment you put in there uh, which is actually something that that might be that might happen to you right if you come to a small venue and then uh, there's a singer and somebody playing on a violin and then you you put this huge subwoofer there they are they, are, they already think it's too loud before you even switched the the the, the power on right 
So really, I always I always thought the bigger the better. Is isn't that a <laughs> valid in club situations? <laughs> you gotta ask the women. Um, uh, yeah, well, club situations might be something else, right? Right. So so you have to you have to differ the the um, between the the purposes for the, for the gigs. Yeah, if you if you if you if you're thinking club. Uh, then the 18 uh, inch uh, subwoofer might be the, b the better choice because then you have this you have the, the, op the opposite expectation from people you say if you if you have a, if, if you have a small subwoofer there and then people are like it's not going to be as heavy in my in my uh, stomach as I as I like it to be right mm -hmm. um, especially if you play dubstep music or stuff like that like bass music you need some you need some 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 bigger bass mm -hmm. yeah so I I would say always uh, it depends what kind of um, user you are. Yeah. Okay, and it depends also on what kind of media you use. Here we do have uh, like a digital lineup yeah. and we do have a uh, analog setup with uh, turntables. So if there's um, more than one DJ over the evening mm -hmm. um, and there are different ways of performing, uh, is there something you need to keep in mind uh, when you take over the other DJ and uh, this guy has used a different setup? What what would you, would you recommend? Well, first, uh, and I think in my opinion most important, uh, is uh, to not disturb the DJ that's playing before you. I hate that and I always teach my students, pay respect to what, whatever is people is like performing uh, before you. So don't, uh, if, if you need to plug something in, ask them like, like kindly and, and tell them that you ha if it's okay if you connect something because you have to do it. Um, so that's my first thing which doesn't have to do anything with, with, the, with the technique but it's something, I've, just be kind, right? So that's something, in my opinion, very important. So it, and then you, you don't get hated, that's good too, right? <laughs> And then but we all know the situation when the DJs line up or, and the, the one guy doesn't want to give up his performance. Well, okay, <laughs> well, then you have to be more persuasive, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but sound, sound, wise, sound wise, what is there to mind if you, for example, have a MP3 DJ in front of you and you're going to perform with uh, records afterwards, with yeah. vinyl? Yeah, well, you are, with records you, are, you obviously have more problems like playing vinyl than like somebody playing with a CDJ or a controller or something else um, because you of course you have problems with feedback uh, we, I, I reckon I, I'm, I'm assuming that that you know it but if you don't know um, when you play vinyl your your bass uh, starts to move your 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 needle which will produce more bass which ends up in a, in a feedback uh, so so this is also the answer to the question I uh, asked you before when is there too, too, much, too much bass, bass yeah, you need to be a record uh, DJ to know yeah of course <laughs> yes certainly yeah definitely so there's there, there might be too much bass there might be uh, um, um, uh, other possibilities to get rid of that. I mean, for, for example, don't put your uh, don't put your um, turntables on the subwoofer. For example, <laughs> that's the worst case scenario. But I saw that. Um, so yeah, because there was no other other choice. Um, and uh, and it, but uh, for example, you can you can you can you can you can use something to um, like a cushion. Yeah, like a cushion. cushion yeah. Uh, to. To get to get get rid of of of, um, of the vibrations, stuff like that, and then of course um, uh, use good equipment like uh, like like professional system uh, uh, needle systems and stuff like that. But of course, yeah. But you have you have certain certain problems playing vinyl compared to uh, to somebody playing uh, um, digital music. But uh, Lucas 2K can handle it all. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. If you, if you, uh, well, you, ha you, you are flexible in how much bass you wanna, you wanna, you wanna use. You are flexible in where you wanna put your subwoofer. Uh, so, yeah, you have certain, certain um, possibilities to avoid problems with to, with the Luca system, of course. Yeah. That was uh, very, very much to take in, and a, a <laughs> lot of insights uh, from your side. And uh, I thank you very much for the time uh, to come here, and uh, hope to see you play around Mainz uh, regularly. I heard. Yeah, of course, yeah. Mainz, Frankfurt, uh, that's where, where I play the most. Yeah. So check this man out. This was <laughs> Markus Scholl at uh, HK Audio and see you next time.